Good afternoon, good evening, my beloved brothers and sisters, those that may be listening to the audio. Today, we're going to be reflecting upon our Lord Jesus Christ, His deity. Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as that supreme being whom our Father ordered to come to the world to rescue. All of he that may believe in him to forgive sin, to save mankind, those that may obey him, that believe in our Lord, all of those whom are willing in their heart for God. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let us open our Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3. Let us reflect upon verse 16 and 17, Matthew, chapter 3, and it so reads, the word of our Lord. Jesus, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Glory be to the Lord. Here we see how the Lord, our Father, manifested. And before those persons that were there that day, the baptism of whom were our Lord received on behalf of John the Baptist. And John, with all the disciples and all of those persons, heard the voice from heaven when he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And in chapter 17, still of Matthew, we're going to be reading Matthew 17, verse 5. Verse 5. It reads, While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. This is the sign, the proof without doubt, that the Lord Jesus Christ is our King, is our Lord, is our Savior, is sent from God. And through Him, we, we shall be rescued, and we will win eternal life. If and when, in living the rest of our days, or all of our life, doing the will of the Lord, and fulfilling His commandments, this promise shall be reached just as it was given the fulfillment of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ here on earth, there in Jerusalem specifically. And there the Lord began to manifest and to preach his gospel. But before these things, what we just read is the fulfillment, the prophecy of Isaiah. 42, Isaiah chapter 42, Isaiah 42, Isaiah the prophet in the Old Testament, he prophesied regarding our Lord Jesus Christ, regarding the fulfillment of these marvels. When the Lord was baptized in water and the heavens were opened and a voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased to he hear him. This prophecy of Isaiah in chapter 42, Behold, my servant whom, referring to Jesus Christ, whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Here is the prophetic word of our God through Isaiah the prophet. How many years passed, many centuries, for this promise to be fulfilled. 
And we, after reading this in Matthew chapter 3, 16 verse, and Matthew 17, we see these glorious promises fulfilled. But let us continue reading. What else did the Lord promise for this time, for this future, which is what we are living? Here in verse 2, referring to the servant of the Lord. It reads, he will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street, saying that he would not be boastful of his dignity, of his person. He would not have that arrogance that some had because of their title, and they were proclaiming whom they were, showing that they were important. On the contrary, our Lord Jesus Christ behaved as that man who was humble, gentle, simple. This is why it says he will not cry out nor raise his voice, nor his voice heard on the street. He would not proclaim on the street, saying to the people, I am the king. Come to me. Believe in me. Look, I am the king of Israel. I am the king of the Jews. You see the title my father gave me? The Lord never did this. This is why it says his voice will not be heard in the street because he was not proud or boastful. This was never within him. He simply came to fulfill and obey the father, to do the task that the father had given him, to do this work with such humility and simpleness so that the persons who heard him would believe. And those that heard as well, those that would believe, would follow his steps, his example, that of gentleness, merciful love. All of this is what we see. These are the characteristics of our Lord. Verse 3 of Isaiah that we continue reading, it continues speaking of what he would be doing when he manifested in the preaching of his gospel. It continues, a bruised reed he will not break. Meaning, he would not go against the orphan or the widow or those that were poor. Those persons whom did not have a voice or a vote. Those weak who did not have power or authority. On the contrary, our Lord Jesus, what he did was comfort them, teach them, guide them. He would tell them, sin no more. Go and sin no more. But when he said to the woman, in the act of adultery where they had caught her and they said, they said to the Lord Jesus Christ, the law of Moses says that these persons have to be stoned. Those that commit adultery, they have to be stoned. Christ in his mercy. He said, will he that is without sin cast the first stone? It is as if none dared because they all had been sinning. And they all were fearful and all were scared that the Lord would discover their heart and their sin, their wickedness. And this is why none threw the stone. And when the Lord said, and where are those that accuse you? The woman said, they have gone. So the Lord in his great mercy said for it to be fulfilled, this verse, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoking flax he will not quench. The Lord says. I as well do not condemn you. I as well don't judge you. Go and sin no more. Here is the mercy of our Lord with her. This woman was this bruised reed. This bruised reed is wheat that is broken. It's a bruised wheat that is broken. It has to be burned. And the same, the smoking flax. This flax, it is already lit and they turn it off, but they see that the smoke is still rising but they're not going to destroy the person they're not going to finish them on the contrary the lord was going to raise them up strengthen them this is the work that our lord jesus christ did of being merciful with the humble with the gentle with those that are willing in their heart to hear his voice to do his will to believe in god so the lord says Those that believe in him, those that believe in our God are of a humble heart. Those that do not 
those that put down the existence of God, the Lord marks them and says they are arrogant, rebellious, stubborn, prideful. Those that believe that they are first those that govern the world, those in charge. So the Lord does not approve of them because he wants gentle and simple hearts. And the Lord as well says that all he that believes, that loves him, that listens, is intelligent. So there it continues. So he will bring forth justice for truth. Four reads. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands shall wait for his law. The coastlands is referring to the Gentiles, the people in the Gentiles. The Lord clarifying that not only was the Lord giving salvation for the people of the, of Jerusalem, for the Jews, but as well salvation would be for the Gentiles. So therefore, this is why he says that he would no longer tire, but that he would establish justice on the earth and all would be waiting for his word. Today, we are rejoicing of the word of our Lord. And today we see that our Lord is interested in wanting for the world to know his name, his path, his existence, his truth. That mankind know God, that they value and respect our Lord in difficult moments, in these moments that we are living now. We need of God. All of us, they need of the Lord. All need to call and search for the Lord, pray to the Lord, ask of God. To do these things, you do not need to memorize many words. Simply that in your heart, you say, Lord, creator of the heavens and the earth, Lord, you that made Adam and Eve, this Lord that spoke to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that Lord that walked with Moses, that you did many miracles there in Egypt, signs there, that same Lord to you of whom we call upon. It is to you of whom we search for. Lord, remember us. We are your creation. We are your creation, O Lord. Have mercy, O God. Extend your hand and remove this illness, this disease that is deadly. Remove all this epidemic, O Lord, that is happening in the world. Remember, O Lord, this is what all of you should be doing. The people that have not had the experiences with a true and living God at least recognize that God exists. Look for the Bible, read the Bible, and there you shall find the truth of God. And this truth will make you free. And with this truth, you shall be blessed. So this is the moment of analyzing and ref- and reflecting upon, trusting upon a living God that is true and of power. So the word of the Lord is there written. And we should give value to it and credit to it and be willing in our heart to accept this God of power. To the brothers and sisters that are listening, I know you have believed in the Lord because you have had experiences with God and the Lord speaks to us, manifests in our lives. And the Lord is speaking through dreams, visions, through prophecy, revelations. The Lord is speaking to his believers, to his followers. And this is why I as well invite the other listeners who have not had these experiences to read the Bible and to pray and to ask the Lord with your own words. Just as when you ask a favor from your friend and you say, aid me, help me, give me advice. What should I do? Do the same thing with God because the Lord is spirit and he is power. And he is there so close to you, listening to your prayer, listening to your calling, looking upon your needs. This is what this true Lord does. So all of you, I invite you to believe in this King and this Savior that the Lord sent and that the Lord promised here through Isaiah the prophet and the Lord fulfilled many centuries later. 
And then later as well, when we read the Gospels, we find Jesus Christ, the King of Israel, the King of the universe. We find him there doing the marvelous work. We find him teaching his doctrine, his perfect gospel. And he went, but left us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what is today with us. And he is whom guides us, counsels us, comforts us, teaches us what we should do. And still teaches us to pray and how to present ourselves and direct ourselves before our Lord. Do not doubt. Continue steadfast. And we continue reading to glorify our Lord. In verse 5, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. Blessed is the name of the Lord. For what? So that they can open blind eyes, but not only the blind physically, but the blind spiritually. That person that walks in the world without God and hope, it is a person that is blind, ignorant. They're ignoring the things of God. Don't see the things of God. Don't see the power of the Lord, the hand of God. They have not enjoyed the blessings of God. This is why we say they are blind. As well, the Lord to bring out prisoners from the prison those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise. Here we see the Lord does not praise the carved images. So we have to look for a God of spirit and truth, because the Lord is spirit. It says, all the things the Lord will fulfill, just as he announces them through his prophet. He fulfilled, and the Lord Jesus Christ began to preach and do his works, his marvelous works manifesting. And until today, we that are reading the Bible and we are following the path of the Lord, we enjoy of the presence of God. We enjoy of the guidance of our Lord, of his comfort. The Lord has many words of comfort, many words of hope for those that love him for those that follow him, for those that have a willing heart to hear the word of our God, for those of whom call upon the name of the Lord. For all of they, there are many blessings. So therefore, our Lord is our father and we are his creation. Let us call upon him, worshiping him with all of our heart. We give thanks to our Lord and we worship him. A brief prayer, Heavenly Father, Thank you, my Lord, for hearing us, for looking upon us, for seeing our affliction, O Lord. Look at the sadness. Look at the anguish, the sadness, and the calling of many. Look at the situation that is being experienced. Lord, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you extend your hand and you remove this illness. Do not allow that this illness extend any longer. That it not be for a long time, that it be soon, Lord, that you remove all of this, this flag. Look at your creation, your children, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O Lord, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, for he be the glory, the honor, and the worship forevermore. Amen. Glory to the Lord. And now let us sing to the Lord a chorus. If you have the book of the hymns and choruses, there's a beautiful chorus that says, he did so much for me. Chorus 141. So we're going to sing without music. To heaven I am going soon. Let us sing chorus 141. Él hizo tanto para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí. Jamás podré contarle la mitad de las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí. Jamás podré 
contarle la mitad de las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí. Él hizo tanto para mí, Él hizo tanto para mí, jamás podré contarle la mitad de las cosas que el Señor ha hecho para mí. Glory be to the Lord. Glory to my Lord. Do not fear, brothers and sisters, that the Lord says that he's going to help us and that this will be for a time, provi provisional time, but the people to remember God and to repent as well, the Lord says, many persons whom need to repent, whom need to think upon their life, their wrongful actions that they have done and recognize all of this before the Lord, so the Lord as well may forgive and the Lord to remove the wrath and the anger. For all of these things is that the Lord allows for all of these illnesses to come, all of this wickedness to arrive to man. But each day we shall be learning more of our Lord to read the Bible. Thank you. May God bless you.